Uncut Gems is one of my favorite movies of the last year. On top of its incredible, anxiety-inducing filmmaking, what makes it stand out is its main character, Howard Ratner, and the fantastic performance that Adam Sandler gives as the character. From the start of the movie, Howard's life is in shambles. He's being hounded by thugs for money he hasn't paid back. The lies he's been making to con people into doing business are finally catching up to him. We also learned that his wife wants a divorce because he's been cheating on her with one of his employees. As a result of his tumultuous life and his obsession with work, he's neglectful of his children. And his daughter only shows bitterness and resentment towards him. While some movies might use these negative situations to tell a sob story about a guy who just can't catch a break, Uncut Gems does not do this. Instead, it shows us a character who's in this situation because he's a bad person who is unwilling to change. Making someone like Howard the main character of your movie is incredibly risky because he's not very likable at all. In fact, he's an asshole. He has fits of rage when things don't go his way, he lies, cheats, and takes advantage of others. On top of all of that, he's also a gambling addict. Any money he makes, he throws away on a bet. What makes this character work though is that he seems like a real person. Howard is the shady salesman you've seen on the street. The one who's super positive about life and where he's going despite nothing in his life indicating that's a reality. Howard won't stop until he sees massive success. In the face of failure, he says, I can turn this to my advantage. And in the face of success, he says, I can do better. He's a sad, twisted version of the American dream. It's the kind of blind positivity someone turns to so they're not focused on the harsh reality of their everyday life. It's why Howard gambles away all of his earnings. Small victories are not enough for him. He has to push his success as far and as quick as possible. That also feeds into why he's addicted to it. The anticipation of the outcome and the dopamine rush of winning is the only escape he has from his harsh reality. When everything else in his life points to failure, gambling gives him the hope of a reward and a taste of success. And all of this is why he insists on putting the opal up for auction instead of selling it to KG. He wants to get the most out of his efforts, and selling it for a flat amount would not be enough. He wants the rush of the risk. He craves the high stakes and high rewards that an auction would bring. After all, why settle for 75000 when 1 million is in sight? So it's no surprise that when the auction falls through and he's only able to sell the opal at a fraction of what he hoped, he takes the earnings and bets all of it on a basketball game. It's a frustrating action to witness as a viewer, but having him do anything else for the sake of a happier ending would have been contrary to his character. He has to satisfy his greed and he has to feed his addiction. It's a destructive cycle, and one that would have never ended. His death at the end of the movie is the happiest ending his life could have had. He proved his enemies wrong, and he won the biggest bet of his life, earning all the money he originally wanted from the Opal and more. This was his peak, his biggest success, and if he had lived past it, his greed and his addiction to gambling would have destroyed any lasting success that would have come out of it. Religion also plays a big part in who Howard is as a person. He's Jewish in both ethnicity and in religious practice. In the movie, we see him participating in the Jewish ceremony of the Passover, a tradition that stems from a story in the Torah, in the book of Exodus, where the Jews are enslaved by Ramses, the pharaoh of Egypt. The story goes that Moses demands Ramses to let his people, the Jews, go, or he will suffer ten plagues sent from God. Ramses does not give in to Moses' demands, and puts himself and his people through all ten plagues, including the last plague, the Angel of Death, which passed over the houses of the Jews because they had put lambs blood on their doors. Beyond being the origin for the Passover ceremony depicted in the film, this story is also central to the character of Howard. In the ceremony, he is the one who recites the ten plagues. Hail. Arbam. Locusts. Choshech. Darkness. I believe this is because the film is drawing direct parallels between Howard and the Egyptian pharaoh Ramses. Just like Ramses, Howard will not do what is right to save himself and others from bad situations. He stubbornly pursues what he wants, ignoring all reason and warnings. As a result, just like Ramses, he suffers multiple calamities for his actions. I don't think the movie tries to symbolize every plague in the story, however, I do think it's trying to say that just like Ramses, all of Howard's misfortunes are a result of his own stubbornness. He also meets a similar fate as Ramses. In the story of Exodus, Ramses loses. 
After the death of his firstborn son at the hands of the angel of death, he gives in and lets the Jews go with Moses. But sometime after his decision, he changes his mind and chases after them. This leads to Moses miraculously splitting the Red Sea in order for the Jews to cross safely. When Pharaoh catches up to them and tries to cross, he and his army is destroyed when the sea comes back down. Just like in the story, Howard also loses. He loses the fortune he could have had by auctioning the opal. And just like Ramses, he initially gives in, selling the opal to KG. But instead of accepting his situation, he changes his mind after getting the money from KG, and continues to stubbornly pursue what he wants by gambling with the money. And in the pursuit of his own selfish goals, he is killed. Another symbolic connection between the two stories is Howard's brother-in-law, Arno, who is also present at the Passover feast. This is significant when you realize that Moses was the adopted brother of Ramses. Just like Moses brought the plagues upon his brother Ramses, Arno brings calamity to his brother Howard throughout the film. The only difference here being that, with the exception of trapping the men at the end, Howard was not holding any characters captive throughout the movie. His actions had negative consequences for other characters, but ultimately they had the freedom to disassociate with him at any time. No, the people being held captive by Howard is us, the audience. We have been on a chaotic journey with this character, unable to catch our breaths between all of the anxiety-inducing moments. As shocking as his death is, there's a sense of relief that comes with it, knowing that after this, everything will finally sort itself out. Just like the Jews were truly free after the death of Ramses, the death of Howard sets the audience free from the anxiety caused by his decisions. I'm Randall the Vandal, and thank you for watching.